Welcome to Can of Spader Christmas. All right, this is going to be another Raspberry Pi video, generic, you know, kind of Raspberry Pi video. For some reason, I kind of like doing those videos. I'm not really sure why. Um, but we're continuing on with the USB drive, you know, SATA drive kind of thing. And today I have the SanDisk uh pro usb 3.1 this is a 120 gigabyte flash drive and it's supposed to be a fast flash drive it has a usb 3.1 interface now on the pies the 3 and 3b plus has a usb 2 interface or a usb jack so you can still use it but it's going to be limited in the speed it won't be the full speed that this thing can do uh, the raspberry pi 4 which i do have ordered and one is on the way does have two usb 3 jacks this is kind of going along with all right you've got a usb drive you want to boot from that drive so i got this to see if we could do it it was it was fairly inexpensive and a really big drive so I wanted to test that again I also had comments on previous videos about all right well because the setup that I used before was I set up a brand new SD card and then I set up uh, a brand new operating system install for the USB drive and the the comment was well you know that's really not practical if I've spent hours or days or months trying to you know configuring my SD card now I have to start all over again. And uh, so I got a couple of links and got, did some research and tried some things out. There is a GitHub project uh, called RPI Clone. And so I'm going to run through that and see how well it works. Basically, you've got your SD card configured. Everything's working fine. Now you want to move over to a USB boot drive. Um, and, and this script will let you copy that over. So if you head over to GitHub and it, the repository is bill-w2-rpi-clone, um, scroll down to the initialization or the installation part. This is what you do to install it. Pull just do a git clone of this particular repo. Now, if you don't have git, you'll have to install it. And the way you do that is run sudo apt install git. Some people say apt git, if you, you don't need to get. So it's just apt. And if you run that, uh, it'll say that it's already got the newest version of Git, and so then you're ready to go. Uh, pull this down, uh, CD into the directory. It'll create a directory called RPI clone unless you add something to the end here. And then you basically copy this to user local SBIN so that it is a executable that will run from anywhere. So I have booted up the Raspberry Pi. I have got the SD card, I'm booted to the SD card. I have the SanDisk SSD plugged into the USB drive. I've logged in through uh, SSH and I will do an LSBLK. And that tells us what uh, the, all the block devices. So the MMC BLK0 is the SD card. It has two partitions. The first one is the 43.9 megabyte boot partition, and the second one is a 1.8 gigabyte uh, system partition. We also have SDA, which is roughly 128 gigabyte uh, SSD. It shows uh, 119.3 gigabytes. So let's clone the SD card. So we do the sudo uh, rpi clone uh, and then we go to SDA and I hit enter. 
Now it'll tell us that we are booted on the MMC Block Zero 2 gigabyte uh, SD card and the destination is SDA at 128 gigs. And then it's got some more useful information in there. Um, initialize and clone to the destination disk SDA. We type yes and hit enter. And uh, not really sure what this is, so I will just leave it blank. And we are now initializing. So it's creating the boot partition. And now we are creating the big partition. And this will take a little while depending on the size of your disk and the speed of the uh, USB device. Okay, it is done. Um, now it leaves them, the, the partitions mounted because since it had to copy everything over, it mounted those partitions. So you can go and inspect them if you want to. Uh, I'm not going to go into that right now. And then you just hit enter to unmount them. It unmounts them and then we're back to where we were. Now if we do an LSBLK now, You'll notice that SDA has got two partitions. One is the 43.9 meg boot partition, and then SDA2 is the rest of the drive, which has all the system files on it. So now we should be able to shut the Pi down. Dash halt now. And we should be able to boot from the USB drive. It won't boot if it is just this drive in there, but this drive and a keyboard connected to the USB ports, it boots fine. Now I have other flash drives that work just fine. They're just slower. Um, so it's kind of hit and miss. You're gonna have to kind of figure this out for yourself. Um, I tested this on a Pi 3, 3B and a 3B Plus and basically got the same results. So kind of interested to see what it does on a 4 actually. I am going to run a little test here. So I have, this is my, um, the, the SSD drive that you've seen in a previous episode. Uh, hooked up to this board and this Raspberry Pi and I'm going to also connect this drive just to do a speed test so this is a true SSD this is supposed to be an SSD well it's got an SSD controller on it so it's supposed to be faster I don't know but I just like to get an idea this is not going to be as quick as both of them can do because this is USB 2 but it's a fair comparison I think so uh, let me copy a couple of large files over and I will give you those results. All right, that's about it for this video. Uh, once I get the Raspberry Pi 4 in, um, if I get significant enough results, I'll do a complete video on that. Um, I'm not gonna do just a Raspberry Pi 4 video because everybody's already done those that have them. 
but um, if if I do get significant differences with you know this drive versus the the real SSD drive, uh, then I'll I'll do something about that. Other than, if not, then I'll just tell you, hey, this is what I found in one of my future videos. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Now, I shot an email. Uh, so I got six of these, and so they... I got five of these when I started relaxing a little bit, and then BAM!